Be Your Own Hero, a project about new consciousness. Let's look at the philosophy behind the noosphere, starting with the originators of the term. The noosphere, roughly translated, means thought sphere. In this science, it's interrelated with the biosphere, that is all of us, all plants and animals, and all matter of the planet. Vladimir Vernadsky, in a paper published in American Scientist 1945, defined the noosphere as the last of many stages in the evolution of the biosphere in geological history. Pierre, Pierre Teilhard de Chardin, a French priest and paleontologist, he saw both the evolution of complex life forms and consciousness leading to a point he considered the collective awakening of our species. He called this the Omega Point, considering this a future thousands of years away. Communications networks from telephones to radio and television have evolved faster than expected. Edouard Leroy, a respected and well-known natural philosopher. Leroy worked closely with Desjardins, both committed Catholics working to find ways to bridge science and religion, exploring the evolution of humanity and seeking connections to the divine spirit on their quest. It is possible that his efforts included providing conceptual connections between Vernadsky and Desjardins. His work foreshadowed geophysiology, influencing the coming Gaia hypothesis. The Gaia hypothesis, also known as the Gaia theory or Gaia principle, proposes that organisms interact with their inorganic surroundings on Earth to form a self-regulating, complex system that contributes to maintaining the conditions of life on the planet. Topics of interest include how the biosphere and the evolution of life forms affect the stability of global temperature in the atmosphere and other environmental variables that affect the habitability of Earth. The hypothesis was formulated by the chemist James Lovelock and co-developed by the microbiologist Lynn Margulies in the 1970s. The hypothesis was initially criticized for being teleological and contradicting principles of natural selection, but later, refinements resulted in ideas framed by the Gaia hypothesis being used in fields such as earth system science, biogeochemistry, systems ecology, and the emerging subject of geophysiology. James Lovelock best known for proposing the Gaia hypothesis which postulates that the biosphere is a self-regulating entity with the capacity to keep our planet healthy by controlling the interconnections of the chemical and physical environment. Lynn Margulis worked with James Lovelock, bringing the key component of microbiology to the surface of their study. In the 1960s, NASA asked the scientific community how we could determine if a planet has life on it. Pursuing the work from that perspective changed the way they saw our planet. They first looked at our neighbors, Venus and Mars, analyzing visual and atmospheric data collected and found that those planets had very little water. Their atmospheres composed largely of carbon dioxide and nitrogen. Viewing the Earth in similar terms, they took a quick visual look and examined the atmospheric makeup of a winter prairie in the western United States. What they found could not be explained from the basis of chemistry alone. The troposphere, or the lowest level of our atmosphere, contains oxygen, nitrogen, hydrogen, methane, and ammonia. They found all of the major gases circulating in all living things also circulated in the atmosphere of the Earth. The Gaia hypothesis states that the active atmosphere produces these gases to maintain life on our planet. Margulis compared the active soil sampling from the Earth to taking live tissue samples. Her soil sample research indicated that biological life has existed on this planet for eons. Next, we are looking at the virtual noosphere, the World Wide Web, the interconnected networks growing every day with each connection made. Is social networking an evolution of communication that humans have imposed on the planet? Social networks are an evolution of communication. Two-way connections are formed between individuals seeking authentic connections with one another. 
This is a wide sweeping change from the one directional form of communications that industrial progress and consumer culture successfully used. There are many theories about the noosphere, and the one I have chosen to work with involves the internet, our human made network that now spans the globe. Being a natural evolution in our collective thought process, broadcast media has dominated global communications for the better part of the last century positioned to provide humanity with all kinds of media rich ways to escape our present moment, exciting things to buy and all we need to know. The increased adoption and development of social media networks shows a desire to connect with one another more authentically, though. Businesses are finding means to use social networks to their benefit. However, they are having to adjust centuries-old habits on information protection to be more transparent for they now face an audience who can collectively respond with brutal honesty about what they see, find, and feel about these businesses via these networks at lightning speed. Let's look a little closer. This is a very cute example of a common trend referred to as a lol cat. LOL cat. This entertaining development is an early example of authentically entertaining communication. These little buggers have proliferated online, escorting who knows how many thousands of people to social networking. Stuff like this gets people through the day, offering a momentary escape. As a product of industry, the internet is highly commercialized. That is nothing new in our world. Advertising efforts have increased monumentally over the last century. This is a comparison of banner ads, one from earlier days online, Engaging users to click with a quick promise, the objective clear. This later one, including a looping animation, is no less distracting and serves the website visitors about as effectively, unless the visitors are fans of the show. As a branding strategy, mainstream magazines offer online options with features that update daily to keep visitors faithful. Though the primary focus of Sports Illustrated is sports, A website visitor has the Swim Daily option, offering a daily dose of all things swimsuit. Indirect association is a very old and successful form of manipulative communication. Unrelated focal points such as women clad in suits that were not designed for professional athletic activities still serve one of the primary sources of professional sports news. But sex sells, right? Banner ads like this use aging marketing techniques to inspire a few different groups of potential customers to click the graphic to learn more. According to an article in the Next Web, the porn industry may have been responsible for the quick growth of better broadband speeds, payment gateways, and live chat. Though this is another printed ad example, comforting images like these attached to pop-up ads will sometimes sneak into a blog post you're trying to read. In some cases, the ad may not even be related to the article. Advertising practice involves tapping into emotional impulses to generate unconscious connections. In this case, I'd ask whose dishes don't pile up in the sink. Mine are haunting me right now. There are emerging examples like these, showing an evolution in the way people are choosing to develop social networks. Emergency 2.0 Wiki. The wiki is a free global resource for using social media and new technologies in emergencies. The wiki is a collaborative model for sharing and advancing knowledge on utilizing Web 2.0 and social media in emergency management. As well as linking to the wiki, this site provides background information, future scenarios of what an emergency 2.0 ready community could look like, frequently asked questions, event information, and media coverage. You can learn more at emergency20wiki.org. The practice of name brands widely marketing their support of efforts to fight health conditions such as breast cancer, in this case with Kroger, is about 100 years old. By linking to a popular cause, companies aim to increase their positive appearance in society. Looking at the screenshot of people forming letters, you might be able to make out the word, noosphere. Some of you may be familiar with the recent ice bucket challenge phenomenon popularized online. In some cases, the challenge includes either accepting the cold bucket of ice water over one's head and donating to a charity of choice, 
This eventually became focused on ALS, known as Lou Gehrig's disease. There's mixed information about whether a participant has the option of taking the ice bucket challenge or donating to the tragic though somewhat obscure disease. According to WebMD in the U.S., and most of the world, only one to two people out of 100,000 get ALS per year. This is an example of a strange social trend gaining traction for reasons that aren't apparent beyond a wave of adrenaline and enthusiasm if the terms of the challenge are understood. In this group's case, all of these young people take both the ice bucket challenge and they donate to the cause. A link to this video is in this project's blog. In their publication of their effort, we end with this quote from Vladimir Vernadsky. The quote, as I interpret it in the context, was selected to point out the frivolity of this trend. This group named Noosphere actually publicly transmute the viral trend by adopting both challenges admirably. For those who choose to take part in this project, the goal is to develop a sense of intent and inspired use of social networks in order to evolve the information shared into connections that benefit both the participant and their selected audience. Like the group of conscious youth who challenged this meme, the aim is here to provide more awareness. To do this, we will start with a review of some communications tactics that have worked to grow industry over the past century. These will be explored in order to gain a better understanding of the early framework on which successful media communications were built. One key way that advertising, entertainment, and news media have been able to tap into collective consciousness effectively has been the use of archetypes, commonly known symbols with historic meaning. Many of these symbols have roots reaching back to the stories of our ancestors. In this section of the project, we will explore where myths and legends come from and how they have been used. Kaya Mythos Where did myths and legends come from, and what do we have now? What was myth? On the metahistory.org website, the process of myth-making is explained as a process where an artist consulted the muse. The making of the story is a way to discover it. In other words, the unique property of the Gaia Mythos as a story to guide the species resides in its power to reveal us to ourselves through the active description in which we imagine Gaia's story and make it our own. Traditionally, myths had no authors. There were cultural stories shared over generations creating a collective understanding. They usually had lessons or cultural perspectives that influenced the way a group of people related to the cosmos. Is myth a thing of the past? What kinds of stories and information does society use to relate to the world now? If mythology served to help cultures in this comprehensive way, what has replaced that in popular culture? As we tap into the channels of mainstream entertainment, we can see and hear the vividly created versions of our adventure at our convenience. These options have replaced the form of stories once told with words, cultural art, and early forms of live performance. We can identify with characters cast to meet the expected average of viewers. The job of imagining what it might be like to be the character in an adventure is done for us now with ever more graphic detail requiring less active envisioning. Comedy continues to deliver tales that break through the trials of the day, letting us escape our worries and responsibilities and peals of laughter. News outlets broadcast selected information for us as the town criers used to belt out the news in the city of Rome. As long as there's some kind of advertiser or invested interest out there, we will get our broadcast news. What could be more exciting than being part of the shouting mob at a football game? The energy flows through the crowd and each play exhibits all the talent and disciplined skill of our athletes who enact great battles for our passive enjoyment. These highly publicized events give us something to invest our time and emotion in and something to talk about. Ready to learn more? Here's the project overview. You will come out of this with a method for tuning into your chosen direction developing a strategy for moving forward. You will become aware of some old and effective tactics used in one-directional communication that have propelled people to make purchasing decisions 
and direct their attention by way of emotional manipulation. By knowing what some of these are, you will be more conscious of ways to create emotional connections that serve your proactive purpose. Tools are provided throughout that will help you comprehensively brainstorm what direction you want to take to promote your ideas, identify the audiences you are communicating with, and give you some idea about where they are, cultivate original and found content, and develop a strategy for using social media networks that fits within your busy schedule. If this project is successful, you may begin to see social networking differently as more than an information overload or distracting and cheap entertainment. As your dreams become illuminated by application, you may come to view your part in this network as a lively node in the beautifully complex awakening consciousness of the planet.